Toys R Us stores sell a tremendous volume of merchandise each day. As our customers load up their shopping carts, stock levels on the sales floor naturally go down. When an item sells down, that is, gets low, it should be replenished as soon as possible. Restocking the sales floor is an ongoing process. Depending on their popularity, some items sell more quickly than others. These hot sellers need more attention to ensure there's always stock on the sales floor. When you're restocking shelves, first use any loose individual pieces that may have been placed on the gondola overstock shelf to fill empty spaces. If an item is really low, full cartons of merchandise should be pulled from the storeroom. Check the price on the goods to ensure they match those already on the sales floor. Sometimes, an item will arrive that is not already merchandised on the sales floor. It may be a new product, or one we're out of. Once you've determined from the aisle layout where the item belongs, and you've made space for it, you're ready to begin the stocking process. Lay out a pattern with the item. Place one box on the shelf facing out, even with the front edge of the shelf. Then, lay as many boxes deep as you can to fill the shelf. Fill any leftover space at the back of the shelf by standing pieces on end. In the upper right-hand corner of the price label is a number that tells you how many facings a particular product requires. Facings refer to the required number of stacks or peg hooks of an item on the sales floor. If two facings are called for, a duplicate stack is required. If three facings are needed, make three stacks. Once the pattern is set, fill in the space with the product. Keep price labels visible to the customer if at all possible. As you can see by now, we have our own language and techniques when it comes to merchandising. Let's take a look at some more important techniques we use when stocking shelves. For example, striping. That means having two or more facings of the same item lined up vertically, one below the other. Blocking simply means grouping a category of merchandise together vertically. This lets our customer see where one type of merchandise ends and another begins. For example, Mattel items are blocked here and Lash are blocked next to the Fisher Price items. In addition, high dollar or more expensive items should be placed at eye level in plain view of the customer. Some items may be faced, that is, the larger side, which usually has a color picture of the product, is visible to the customer. Larger boxed items are usually stacked on the bottom, or base shelf of the gondola. Pay close attention to these larger items, because when just one piece sells, it can create a large hole. Sometimes, we merchandise larger boxed items by a means called bulk stacking. A bulk section generally has no shelving and allows for a larger quantity of these boxes to be stacked to a height of six foot six inches. An optional bridge shelf can be added. Now, what about leftover items? If the sales floor is fully stocked, then extra pieces can be stored on the gondola overstock shelf. The top one, up there. To take more advantage of the overstock shelf, full cartons should be zipped open and placed on the shelf. A carton is zipped when one side is cut away to expose the merchandise inside, making a much more eye-pleasing merchandise display. Those pieces should go on the top of any zipped cartons. For safety reasons, weight sets, skates, in general, anything heavy should not be put on the overstock shelf. If possible, do place mostly slow-selling merchandise on the overstocks. If an item is hot, you don't want to put a carton up on the overstock, then have to bring it back down to fill a shelf later the same day. And it's always important to keep work areas neat and free from boxes, trash, and supplies which might block the path of the customer. Keep all boxes to one side of the aisle when working. As you can see, keeping our shelves fully stocked is high priority. No stock on the sales floor, our customers can't purchase the items they want. We need to merchandise our products in a way that is appealing to our customer and maximizes every square inch of available space available on the sales floor for our products. Style layouts are a tremendous help. But since it's our usual policy to keep the shelves fully stocked, 
you may sometimes find that space allotted for one item is filled with something else. The layout says this should go here, but there's no room. What do I do? Making space to display all the items we sell isn't always easy. It can require some ingenuity on your part. Frequently, you'll have to rearrange merchandise in an area to make the space you need. Begin by tightening everything already on the shelf. There should be no empty spaces between or behind merchandise. We can't sell empty space. That gives me a little more room, but I need more. Now what? An easy way to make space is to remove duplicate stacks of a particular item. So if you've got two stacks of an item, pull one out. You need to ensure merchandise is given the correct number of facings. Facings refers to the number of stacks or peg hooks of an item's merchandised on the sales floor. This Fisher Price item has two facings. This Fisher Price item has just one facing. The price label on the item tells you the required number of facings. Use any extra pieces to fill existing stacks or put them on the gondola overstock shelf for later use. Now that helps. I'm really on a roll. Look for boxes that are placed long ways on the shelf. Turn them so the short end faces out and you're freed up even more space. Remember to condense and tighten merchandise as you go. What about these few pieces? They're taking up an awful lot of room. When an item sells down on the sales floor and you've determined there's no more in stock, Take the remaining few pieces and place them on the top of a stack of similar size merchandise. Be certain the lower item has a duplicate stack nearby. This is called underbasing. If you come across partial stacks of several similar size items and there is no more in stock, combine them into a single stack. This is called shuffling. This mixed stack of merchandise should be placed on the prime selling shelf directly below the overstock shelf to maximize its visibility. All the techniques we just discussed are what we refer to as condensing. The same principles apply to peg merchandise. If there are duplicate items on two or more peg hooks, remove the merchandise from one to make room for a different item. Put as many of the extra pieces on existing pegs as possible, but don't overstuff the peg. Extras may have to be repacked. Only pieces of the same item can be repacked together, with a maximum of 24 pieces to a box. A detailed repack slip must be filled out and must include manufacturer name and number, skin, retail price, and a description of the item and total number of pieces repacked. Repacking should be done only with the approval of store management or a department head, and it requires their signature on the repack slip. The repack is to be kept in the storeroom. Always use repacks first when pulling merchandise to the sales floor. That damaged skateboard will never sell. Neither will that pair of skates in the open box. And both are taking up space on the shelf. That's a good observation. Items that are open and torn should be repaired with tape if possible. Or they should be taken to the rewrap area in the rear of the store for repair. Collect damaged items from the sales floor and take them to the service area. We call these items RGD, Return Goods Defective. You'll need to fill out the appropriate RGD slip at the service area. I did it. I created a lot more space for more items. Good work. Making room for merchandise can be a challenge. So here are a few helpful hints to keep in mind when you need to create additional space. Tighten and condense merchandise. Remove duplicate stacks or pegs if necessary. Turn boxes so they take up less space. Shuffle or underbase items when only a few pieces remain on the shelf. Remove damaged items or those with packaging you cannot repair. Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Hanna-Barbera Home Video. 
Join us as we show you how to open the door to a whole new world of Hanna-Barbera in-store excitement. From posters to shelf tuckers, pop bags to floor displays, Hanna-Barbera in-store materials set the stage for a profitable relationship with your customers. It's no fairy tale. Your video store will be magically transformed into a profit-boosting Hanna-Barbera environment. Our story begins with our theatrical-sized posters. They feature classic cartoon superstars, and their versatility makes them a perfect first chapter for your success story. Roll two posters into a tube and staple the ends. Attach at the top and bottom of another poster and you've got a custom attention grabber. Use your imagination to create other displays. Shelf talkers take the Hanna-Barbera message right into the aisles of your store. They're perfect to promote all your Hanna-Barbera product. And expand your in-store appeal with our five-foot Flintstone inflatable. Great for adding punch to your sales and it's easy to use our floor displays. Just remove from the shipper crate, assemble the base, and place the tray and header on top. They can form the centerpiece of your Hanna-Barbera environment, or they can be used at aisle ends or store entrances for special promotions. Counter cards make a lasting impression as customers are leaving your store. You can make your own signs utilizing your own Hanna-Barbera ad kit. You can also use the variety of headlines we've provided you to run special promotions like Hanna-Barbera Week. And our previously viewed stickers will make your inventory disappear and make room for the newest Hanna-Barbera titles. There's also a coloring sheet staff ready for your store's name, great for giveaways or contests. Library packs remind customers about the collectability of these classic cartoon characters. The Timeless Tales six-pack even includes bonus stickers. Countertop displays are a handy way to encourage impulse buys at the counter, and our five-foot standee and colorful character balloons can add just the right finishing touch to your Hanna-Barbera environment. Now, what could be more magical? How about a personal visit from a real live cartoon celebrity? Guest appearances by Fred, Yogi, or Astro are guaranteed to enchant your store. Children of all ages love to meet their favorite cartoon friends, and you'll love how simple it is to use. Complete instructions and guidelines are included. You don't have to live in bedrock to qualify for our in-store costume character program. With a minimum purchase and shipping and handling, we'll send you a costume, coloring sheets, balloons, and poster. Everything you'll need for a Hanna-Barbera celebrity celebration. Now you're ready to add some Hanna-Barbera merchandising magic to your store. Remember, at Hanna-Barbera Home Video, we do it all for you. Now we're here to help, so listen up, yo. This is how it's done in home video. Those creative types call this a job. Check out those heads and say start to buy. Now over here, something to catch your eye. It's pretty cool, but that's no surprise. Amazing product that's on your shelves. What do you think? This stuff was made by elves? We do it all for you. 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 We like to make our customers feel at home. If there's an order you need, pick up the phone. We process fast. That's no lie. You won't wait long. It will arrive. Because our inventory rooms always stop. Our doors are open. All you do is knock. We've got posters, costumes. So understand, it's all here for you. If you need a hand. We do it all for you. We do it all for you. Once upon a time, heroes, if you want profits, watch the show. It's got everything you need to know about Hanna-Barbera Home Video. We do it all for you. 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 You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams.
Now that's an eye-catching display, and that's important because everywhere you look, you see stores vying for the customer's attention. Retailers use displays to create impact, generate enthusiasm, and induce customers to buy. Nowhere is this more noticeable than in apparel merchandising of men's, women's, and children's fashions. The appealing display of the product is an extremely important element of the sale. Fashion retailing is a competitive business, and we have to be smart, aggressive merchandisers to succeed against the tough competition that you see in your market every day. You have a dramatic impact on the success of that fashion merchandising effort at Sears. There are a few simple things you can do to ensure that your fashion area looks attractive for your customers every day. This video covers five key aspects of fashion merchandising. We'll see what they are, how to use them, and discuss the simple things that you can do to keep them working effectively in your store. We'll start by discussing the general concepts of issue merchandising and color merchandising. Then we'll focus in on the back walls, the strike zones, and the fashion expression areas of the sales floor. Basically, issue merchandising is the grouping of like goods together on the sales floor. It's a collection of merchandise that is related in some way. For example, it could be a product-related issue, such as men's slacks. The issue might be related by style, such as two-piece jacket dresses. It might be related by fabric, such as men's flannel shirts, or fleece robes in Division 38. Or it could be related by brands, such as our Gulagong activewear. All of these are examples of merchandising issues. In some cases, Issue merchandising also means putting together products that work well together and that are or can be sold together. Now, this would include the coordinate and assortment merchandise found in our Stephanie and Teague's branded collections. Men's hats, scarves, and gloves, on the other hand, are good examples of non-branded assortment merchandising. Whatever the issue, garments usually are organized in the general to the specific and the typical issue normally follows a pattern running from silhouette to style to color, and then finally to size. Color merchandising is exactly what the name implies, the grouping of items together by color. These can be either similar products, a traditional example of which is sweaters, or they can be products that would work well together, such as a women's coordinate group that includes pants, skirts, and tops. Notice that color merchandising includes color families and combinations, not just solid colors. Since most issues come in more than one color, color merchandising simply is a more specialized form of issue merchandising. There's a basic form of color merchandising. It's called color blocking. Products are displayed in a single color group, like this quad rack, in cubes, on shelves, in bins, or on walls. To maximize impact, color blocking is usually used on items with lots of tonnage. Color merchandising racks try to keep color families, such as pastels versus brights and similar colorations, together if possible. The importance of the back walls cannot be overstated. They are integral elements of each department that identify an area by making a strong visual impression on the customer. In essence, Back walls define the area, make a dramatic statement about the product, and convey the message that Sears is definitely in the business of selling that product. Back walls should create a strong visual interest which provides the primary motivation that draws customers off the main aisles into and throughout the department. Back walls provide the backdrop for all other merchandising techniques and are examples of issue merchandising at its best. Our competition usually has smaller, narrower stores with three walls close together. We only have one wall per department, so it has got to be the best it can be. Since dominance of product is the key objective of every back wall display, you want to limit the number of issues so the fashion message is clear. The height of merchandise on wall displays is critical as well. You want to merchandise as high as possible for visibility yet still keep the products accessible to the customer. Also, the top of the merchandise on the uppermost row should be even. 
long runs of product should be enhanced with display breaks, which are used to highlight the merchandise. The inclusion of signs, graphics, mannequins, and other elements in these breaks add impact to the back wall. Spotlights are frequently used to draw attention to the individual elements of wall displays. Be sure they're focused on the right merchandise. Most back wall displays are continually changing. As new items arrive in your department, they should go onto the back wall. The old goods should come off the wall and onto the immediately adjacent racks. The racks are then constantly consolidated according to color and issue. A specific guidance for your back wall treatments is given in fashion expressions. A strike zone is a focal point for an entire shop. It generates interest by creating a break on the sales floor from the rows of space saver racks. Strike zones are designed for one of two purposes. First, there are the hot issues, normally your most high fashion merchandise that will remain in place as long as your marketplace supports it, such as this presentation of Levi's 501s. The other type of strike zone is a permanent location for a high profile Sears national brand, such as Stephanie. The strike zones are not meant for tonnage. Instead, they're designed for impact, for the fashion statement of a strong dominant issue. The merchandise is normally displayed on freestanding fixtures or walls containing upright panels for dominant signing. The height and width of these panels interrupts the pattern of a well-gridded department, setting the area apart. Contrasting carpeting also helps to define the strike zone area and further set it apart. The addition of racks or glass cubes on the carpet areas helps to create a complete shop within the strike zone. Other fixtures and equipment can then vary according to the merchandise arrangement policy recommendations for the specific merchandise. Strike zones employ overhead signing for additional impact and use spotlights to help bring color and merchandise alive. Fashion Expressions is a monthly publication that addresses the appropriate and fashionable use of mannequins and display elements to highlight those issues that are most important to each department. These areas create focal points that show the merchandise to its best advantage, and Fashion Expressions helps you to work with the display department to dress them properly. It provides photos of recommended main aisle and back wall mannequin presentation treatments that you should implement, and it also shows photos of mannequin alternatives. When implementing Fashion Expressions, remember that these displays should always be accessorized for maximum impact. Accessorizing should encourage customers to shop, not deter them from shopping. Thus, it's most effective when done simply and moderately. Mannequin displays should always be signed and should be updated as new merchandise is received to keep them looking timely and fresh. In addition to detailing mannequin treatments, Fashion Expressions illustrates how to accentuate and work with your end caps and also wall displays. Copies of Fashion Expressions are available through the display department or from your sales manager. Regardless of whether products are issue merchandised or color merchandised, whether they're on the back wall, cubed, and strike zones, or on grid racks, there are three techniques that you should always implement to reinforce the overall merchandising effort. The first of these is layering. Layering is the combining of two or three items on a single hanger to create outfits that give customers an idea of how the merchandise can be worn. Layering demonstrates the versatility of garments. It quickly suggests mix and match possibilities, and it also encourages add-on sales. Layering is most frequently used when issue merchandising, and it can be done on any fixture or display element. When done on a column with a broad shoulder wardrobe hanger, a complete outfit may be shown it very visibly highlights surrounding merchandise. When done on space saver racks, layering is used on the first slot of the waterfall facing the main aisle. A second technique is known as blocking. Blocking ensures that your shelves are full, neat, and ready for business. To block merchandise, simply pull the goods forward on hooks or trays so they look as full as possible. It's a simple technique but one that makes well-shopped displays look neat and attractive. 
The final technique is known as feathering. The opposite of blocking, feathering helps give the impression that the racks aren't too full of merchandise. Racks that are too full may discourage the customer and may imply that the product is of inferior quality. To feather a rack, simply put your fingers between the hangers and spread them out evenly on the arm. This not only makes things look less crowded, but it also prevents garments from being jammed so closely together that they don't hang smoothly or properly and are difficult to remove from the rack. Signing is extremely important to the merchandising effort. Signs help identify products, prices, or sizes. In the women's store, the role of signing on racks clearly establishes the primary size ranges by copy and coloration. In children's, line IDs more precisely inform the customer of specific size ranges. Signs also announce your promotional efforts and they help communicate the feature story about specific products or lines. It's important that these signs are accurate and contain the right factual information about the product. Finally, they should be correct, which means displayed with the proper merchandise on the right rack and priced where appropriate. Because the merchandise in your department is continually changing, it's important that the signs constantly be checked to maintain these criteria and to keep them up to date. How does all this affect you? Simple. While headquarters sets up display and merchandising guidance according to the principles we've just discussed, the daily upkeep of the floor is essential, and that's an ongoing part of your job. For example, a customer may have returned the wrong item to a branded strike zone. They might have placed an incompatible color on a merchandise rack or replaced the wrong product in an issue merchandise display. Recognizing each problem, you can quickly correct it to bring the floor back to normal. And that'll not only make things more convenient for the customer, it will also help you sell more merchandise. Now, when you recognize problems early, you can fix them quickly to prevent them from getting out of hand. And that's important because once displays get totally messed up, it takes a lot more time to straighten them out. And that's the kind of time you just don't have. You do have time, however, to do your part. And it's important to our mutual success in fashion merchandising at Sears. After all, exciting programs have been designed and implemented to capture the customer's attention and encourage them to make their apparel purchases at Sears. By understanding these five key merchandising concepts, issue merchandising, color merchandising, back wall, strike zones, and fashion expressions, and supporting them with the general techniques we discussed, you can help keep those programs working effectively, no matter which apparel department you're in. So make the time for simple housekeeping and tidy up the sales floor every day. Keep your department organized the way it's supposed to be, and together we can succeed in today's highly competitive fashion marketplace. You're watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. The following videotape is designed to assist you with the installation of your new Nintendo point of sale materials. Please watch this entire videotape prior to starting the installation. You can also reference the menu of elements to ensure that you have received all of the necessary items. Please check with your regional manager prior to installing these fixtures as you may need to notify the mall management if you plan on completing this installation after hours. During normal business hours, you may contact Nintendo's Display Online Technical Support Service with general display setup questions at 1-800-875-1852. Prior to installing the Nintendo fixtures, you should re-merchandise the product in the front of your store as pictured here. The first section should be Nintendo accessories and controllers. The next section should be Nintendo 64 software, memory packs, and RF cables. 
Next will be Super NES software and accessories. And the final section should contain Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket Colors hardware, accessories, and software. We're going to start this reset with the installation of the M37XB Nintendo coded neon logo sign. For this installation, you will need the template, the enclosed drill with drill bits, and a pencil for marking the placement of the sign. This sign will be placed on the wall above the front entrance facing the Nintendo section or the middle of the store. Begin by centering the template on the wall and mark the top of the holes with the pencil. You should measure the distance from the top of the wall on each side of the template to ensure that the sign will be straight. Use the enclosed drill to make the holes marked with the pencil and then screw in the anchors with a Phillips head bit. Then screw in the bolts leaving one half inch of the bolt exposed as shown here. You can then hang the Nintendo neon sign and run the power cord up and over to the electrical outlet. Next we are going to install the Mario screen which can be hung in two different areas depending on the layout of your store. Either behind the Nintendo 64 interactive or in the first feature area section of your store. Hang the screen by removing the adhesive backing strip at the top and then bottom once the top is placed. Start this installation by turning off the power to the monitor and then remove all items from the top of the monitor housing. Next, place the Plex riser for the Nintendo 64 fiber optic sign. It should fit tightly between the monitor housing and the front window. Place the sign on top of the riser and feed the power cord to the electrical outlet. You will want to use the enclosed power strip for this installation. There is no on-off switch to the sign, so you will need to use the switch on the power strip to easily turn the sign off at night. Place the Mario statue on top of the monitor housing. The Star Fox statue, not pictured here, should be positioned at the far end of the Nintendo area or in the window depending on the size of your store. Please reference the setup instructions and operating procedures enclosed with a Nintendo 64 Interactive. Make sure that the monitor is attached and secured to the metal plate with the enclosed hardware prior to moving the display. Plug the Interactive into the outlet on the wall. In the back of the Interactive, there is a small opening. Reach into the opening with one finger and feel for the on-off switch to the built-in power strip. This is how you will turn the interactive on and off each day. You can then slide the interactive into place. You may need two people for this installation. Please reference the setup instructions for the Nintendo 64 interactive. There are four valence graphics that need to be installed over the corresponding areas. There is one each for the four areas including Nintendo Accessories, Nintendo 64, Super NES, and Game Boy Pocket Colors. The signs hang simply by using the hooks designed for your store's slat wall fixturing. Lift up on the bottom of the sign and insert into the top slot, then down and center the sign above the area. Repeat this procedure with the three remaining signs. There are three graphic panels, two for Nintendo 64 and one for Game Boy Pocket Colors. These signs are to be placed above the valence graphics using the L brackets on the back of the signs. Position this sign flush against the wall and then center the sign on the wall above the corresponding area. You will need the drill with the Phillips head bit for this installation. The wood is soft above the soffit area and the screw should go into the wood easily. If needed, you can pre-drill holes prior to installing the signs. The character set includes Mario, Bowser, and Star Fox. The character sets come with an adhesive backing and should be positioned in between the graphic panels as shown here. You should have received banners for current Nintendo game titles. These banners should be hung with the attached hooks and string. Pre-cut the string based on the ceiling height and place the hooks through the lighting grid 
and angle the banner to the center of your storefront. You will hang the Star Fox plane in the same manner as the banners. Your plane will have only one string in the center of the plane, which will allow for 360 degree rotation. You may want to use some additional string, as pictured here, to alter the angle of the plane or to keep the position stationary. You will also be receiving an oversized Game Boy Pocket. This piece can either be hung from the lighting grid or placed on the enclosed stand. This completes the installation of the Nintendo merchandising reset. You'll find it here, and here, and here, and here. Quality in every detail. It's everywhere you look at Casablanca. From our new headquarters, to new fans, to new finishes, and light fixtures. New concepts in merchandising and marketing. And a commitment to the very best support for our dealers. It's all part of our most ambitious introduction ever for the world's finest ceiling fans. We begin our journey here at Casablanca's new headquarters in Pomona, California. Here you'll find much more than a world-class showroom. A new efficient customer service area and new facilities for creating the world's finest ceiling fans. You'll find a fresh spirit of excitement a strong commitment to excellence that we've carried through in every detail. In 1997, we're continuing our tradition of leadership in ceiling fan design, functionality, and quality. We've responded to consumer trends with five stunning new fans. The elegant Art Nouveau Style Nouvelle, the newest member of Casablanca's top-of-the-line signature collection. The casual Estrada, with rattan or wrought iron style trim inserts, UL damp rated for such damp and humid locations as sunrooms, gazebos, and patios. The Utopian, a smaller, versatile fan that's also UL damp rated, making it ideal for bathrooms, kitchens, and smaller rooms. The fresh, contemporary Metropolitan with a wide selection of motor and blade combinations and the Lanai, a distinctively designed fan for casual settings that also meets rigid UL wet standards for outdoor use. We've also created exciting new fan finishes and blade finishes in natural subdued tones to complement today's most popular interior designs. In keeping with our fashion-forward sense of elegance, Casablanca is introducing exclusive ceiling fan light fixtures from Fabian, Italy's premier creator of fine lighting products, and new glass from Beyond, the world-renowned French glassmaker. Here is another Casablanca exclusive, the powerful XLP2000 motor, which provides enhanced performance and efficiency with quieter operation and increased air delivery. It was designed, developed, and manufactured by Casablanca for Casablanca fans. And there's much more in store for you in 1997. Here is Casablanca's functional new ceiling fan display, the perfect way to present a strong display of the world's finest ceiling fans and fan controls. A new catalog that's as practical as it is beautiful. An exciting new ad planner hang tags, point of sale materials, and sales training materials, all created to give you the competitive advantage, and all produced with the attention to quality in every detail that has become the Casablanca hallmark. The beauty, the practicality, the style, grace, sophistication, and intelligence that place Casablanca alone at the pinnacle of the ceiling fan industry. Look forward to a successful 1997. It's just what you've come to expect from Casablanca, the world's finest ceiling fan. You're watching Sleepcore. Sleep tight. Thank you. 
very much. Have a good day. Entertainment retailing today is as competitive as ever. New configurations and products are making the in-store presentation even more critical. What are savvy retailers doing to make the most of their merchandising efforts? We'll find out. The Envirocell Consumer Behavior Study. This large-scale inquiry into the minds and attitudes of our own customers was conducted by the Envirocell Research Firm for the NARM Recording Industry Association of America Merchandising Committee. This study has given us an inside look into the retail buying process. In our second segment, you'll find out what hidden cameras and exit interviews revealed about shoppers' behavior. And we'll learn how to turn the Envirocell study recommendations into profit-making designs, all on In Store Today. Welcome to In Store Today, the NARM merchandising video magazine. Hi, I'm Kelly Perrine. My co-host, Stephanie O'Neill, and I are here to give you the inside scoop on recorded entertainment merchandising. Merchandising is advertising at the point of sale. In our first story, field reporter Nick Erickson will tell us how successful merchandisers have turned their stores into retail showcases. Thanks, Kelly. Attitudes and lifestyles pioneered by the entertainment industry's artists are key elements in selling all types of consumer products. Music, television, and movie personalities are now a part of everyone's lives. With this in mind, we went into the field to find out how retailers are capitalizing on the selling power of popular culture by turning their stores into theaters for selling. The theater for selling starts with the stage, the retail space. The breadth of home entertainment products and retailer services are making many stores an entertainment destination for consumers. In this store, each area is clearly laid out for consumer access. Display and product areas reinforce each other. All configurations are available and cross-merchandising between audio and video products is easily seen. The cashier area fits in with the store's overall traffic flow, providing convenience and room for display space. Traffic flow and sight lines are a big part of this store's stage setting. Consumers are invited in with attractive displays and lighting. The outer one-third area of the store features displays and product information drawing the consumer into the store. Once inside, consumers have clear sight lines to the rest of the interior. Signs and lighting direct the consumer to the products easily identified by category, configuration, and artist. In this store, special interest areas such as singles, children's, or soundtracks are designated by special fixturing and signage. By positioning these areas towards the rear of the interior, consumers can be drawn deeper into the store. Nothing says showbiz like lighting, and here the spot, display, and accent lighting really tell the consumer that the show is on. In this store, spotlights focus on displays and product areas, the stars of the show. Accent lights, chasers, and border lights define displays and interior design features. Backlit posters can enliven flat art. The general interior lighting covers the rest of the retail space for maximum traffic flow and product visibility. Theatrical style lighting focuses the consumer's attention on the products and sets the stage for that buying decision. Good product access is part of the act. Here, CD and cassette browser bins, shelving, step downs, and waterfalls offer exposure and entice the consumer to get their hands on the product. The entire focus of the product presentation is to maximize eye appeal and consumer interest. Effective merchandising gets the product into the consumer's hands, which is 50% of the sale. Retailers work very hard at creating a unique identity for their store. Whether it's a single outlet or a multi-store chain, store identity is a crucial factor in coordinating all of the advertising and merchandising efforts to create a single impression for the consumer. I spoke with Terry Woodward, president of Waxworks Disc Jockey, and asked him, what elements make up your store's identity? 
We feel that in today's retail environment that a music retail store should make an exciting visual and high-tech presentation. Our stores utilize as clear and concise signage as well as attractive neon lighting. We also utilize TV monitors, listening posts, electronic information system, and other interactive technologies. Since we sell entertainment, we feel that we should create an atmosphere that emphasizes that fact. The retailer's identity starts with the exterior signage and store entrance. Consistent graphic repetition of store logos used in print advertising reinforce the sales message. Once inside, the interior signage, posters, personnel identification, flyers, and anything else that carries the store's name clearly reminds consumers of the store's identity. Signage is essential to direct consumers to the categories and products in which they are interested. Store atmosphere is an unspoken but important part of encouraging consumer browsing. Retailers who plan their stores with an inviting interior and remain consistent in all aspects of merchandising and fixturing typically get the best results. Colors and materials have an influence on consumer attitudes. Neatness counts here too as clutter can confuse the consumer. In-store play establishes a musical atmosphere and can direct a consumer's interest to an impulse sale. Whether it's a store-wide system or a personal listening station, in-store play lets consumers sample the product before buying. Video is also a big part of the in-store play picture. Effectively used, video monitors can be a dynamic, moving segment of the merchandising mix. In-store displays are a key element in showcasing the stars and their products. Whether wall displays, windows, end caps, or freestanding, Merchandising displays are advertising at the point of sale. The best of these displays direct the consumer to the product. Hi, this is uh, James Miller. He's the general manager of the Tempo Crenshaw and Tempo USC stores. Uh, James, uh, we're curious about how you decided to choose the displays in your store as it relates to the sales of your items. Whatever merchandise that uh, we are trying to push at that particular time, we generally take an end cap and we place that merchandise within that space so it will tie in with the boards. Uh, at various times we do the hangings uh, to tie in with the sales merchandise and try to lead the customer to that particular space. Windows or mall store entry displays are the first chance to grab the consumer's attention. Windows and entry displays are big, clear, and readable from a distance. They bring star power to the store's marquee. Notice here how effective use of interior lighting has reduced reflections and increased readability. These wall displays take maximum advantage of the display graphics provided by the labels and are accented with a dedicated display space and display lighting. One step beyond are these exciting store-made displays featuring graphics from the product and related images. A big sell feature in most stores are end caps. These prized merchandising areas combine the high visibility of display graphics with the product stocked in depth and in all configurations. End caps are used to focus on sale themes including artist and label specials, sale items, and new releases. Freestanding displays are a chance for merchandisers to work in three dimensions. Walk-around displays can include product from every angle. Shelf talkers and divider cards are pinpoint display opportunities to direct the consumer to the product. Counter displays are one last chance for an impulse sale with consumers as they are checking out. Accessories and smaller items do well here. Make sure to avoid a cluttered look. Cross-merchandising is an opportunity to capitalize on the image and consumer awareness of performing artists in other product areas. In this store, stuffed animals are cross-merchandised with videos to reinforce both products. Recordings make great premiums that other retailers may want to use with their own promotions. Creative use of cross-merchandising can make for bigger sales in both categories. All of the elements of successful merchandising come together in a campaign which combines advertising, promotion, and merchandising into a single unified sales effort. Merchandising is the important final step in a unified sales, advertising, and promotional effort. 
Store advertising features the theme with artist logo graphics tied to the store's identity. Exterior signage and window displays attract the consumer. Once inside, in-store play and POP direct the consumer to the product. On multi-artist programs, sampler CDs and custom in-store videos pre-program the store's in-store play system to reinforce the sales message. By combining all of these elements into a unified sales effort, retailers can cut through the clutter of sales messages consumers face every day. Additional merchandising opportunities abound in tour support, artist appearances, radio station promotions, and cross promotions. In addition, successful retailers make the most of everyday merchandising which encourages consumer browsing and add-on sales to a shopper's visit. Ideas include top sellers and new releases. Other theme ideas include employees' personal favorites, critics' choice, or a local radio station's top hits. There you have it, Kelly. A coordinated merchandising effort makes for an exciting store and add-on sales. Thanks, Nick. In our next segment, In Store Today will show what hidden cameras revealed about shopper behavior in profiting from the EnviroCell study. This document is the EnviroCell Consumer Behavior Study, a detailed report on actual consumer buying patterns in retail stores as captured by hidden cameras and with follow-up interviews. EnviroCell was chosen by the NARM, RIAA Merchandising Committee to research the impact that the changes in configurations and products have had on the consumer. Three target locations were chosen, and researcher observations reinforced by hidden cameras have given us a fresh picture of how consumers are selecting and buying recorded entertainment products. I set out to find how experienced and knowledgeable retailers are using these findings to increase their sales and profits. I'm here at the Hollywood Virgin Megastore, and one of the first things I found is that sight lines and placements are as important as the artwork itself in creating effective POP displays. Consumers are coming into stores hungry for information. Interiors, which create space for displays and keep the sight lines clear, are making big points with consumers. It all starts with the windows. Window displays need to be big, simple, and eye-catching. Whether consumers are walking or driving past a retail outlet, they need billboard-sized graphics to catch their attention. Sightlines are critical here, as intervening traffic can obscure the lower portion of window displays. This graphic overlay shows how keeping the headline in the top one-third of the window display area helps consumers get the message, even if the view is partially blocked by pedestrians. Lighting is another factor in window visibility. Daytime lighting, combined with awnings, lets consumers see through the glass to the display. Other stores have featured artistic blow-ups of cover art as a fixture in their exterior image. Inside the store, sight lines and traffic flow combine to create the most effective POP areas. Image displays are designed for maximum visual impact and quick readability. Big logo graphics, Artist photographs and striking designs combine to create an individual identity for the artist or album. The product should be placed in or near the display to reinforce the sales message. Image displays can be read at a distance and need clear sight lines for the consumer. Flexibility in design and in poster elements can help get the artist's name into the consumer's eye when the main image falls outside the principal sight line, as in this versatile poster for Tammy Wynette. As the EnviroCell study showed, consumers have a narrow beam of focus, and the most effective displays fall into that beam. This graphic overlay shows how narrow the range of a consumer's vision is when compared to store fixturing. Here's an example of bin displays. Note how the sight lines are focused for close distances, and that consumers have little view of the rest of the store when browsing bin displays. Cascaded or waterfall displays have a larger surface area, which shows more of the face of the product. In addition, products in cascaded displays can be seen more easily from a distance. Crowding the viewing distance with obstacles in the store minimizes the effectiveness of cascaded displays. Mobiles and hanging displays create competing interests. On the one hand, a mobile can easily be placed in the consumer's line of vision. On the other, mobiles obscure sight lines to other parts of the store and can create a cluttered image. 
The use of mobiles should be checked with the store's security policy, as the movement of mobiles can trigger some alarm systems. Clear signage and departmentalization is even more critical as stores are more and more becoming home entertainment centers. The range of choices in this store is an example of the spread of entertainment products. In addition to CDs, cassettes, and even sheet music, there is video, books, magazines, video games, CD-ROM and multimedia products, a children's department, international music, music hardware, and music accessories and film. Truly a one-stop entertainment center. The Envirocell study found that one area of great untapped sales potential is the foreign resident and tourist market. Compared to their own markets, music is an attractive purchase, provided they know that they are welcome, that they can find what they want, and that they can get personal help in their own language. Retailers have found that a small investment in customer service can yield good rewards. At Tower, foreign language signage reminds tourists that deep catalog products are bargains and ask, why pay more? There's no better way to capitalize on the consumer's complete attention than at a listening station. The CD-based players are a modernization of an old idea where consumers can listen to the music before they buy. Information-hungry shoppers also require visual stimulation as they listen to music. Here's how retailers are using label-supplied materials and their own imaginations to maximize the marketing opportunities that listening stations provide. These brainstorming ideas from Uni Distribution would create listening stations that are flexible in their design and allow space for placing additional information for shoppers. Many labels have added several lines of copy on the artist to the back of their CDs for listeners. These frames from California record distributors were tested to create a showcase for additional information at listening stations. These simple, colorful one-sheets from Sony are posted by sales reps at listening stations. Information can include suggested tracks, reviews, event calendars, chart positions, and bios. Customers are attracted to the bright colors. Even more informative are newsletters, which may be placed at listening stations, such as this four-pager created by Rack Jobber Handelman Company for Kmart. Bonuses include discount coupons and even a short customer survey. The response has been terrific. Tower has had many successful results with listening stations and has even used consumer interest to test market new or slower selling products. Combining color copies of the CD booklets into a scrapbook and including reviews and other newsy info on the artist minimizes clutter and has won raves from consumers. Consumer feedback is a big plus with questionnaires or suggestion forms. Discount coupons, special deals on multiple purchases from the listening station, contests, giveaways, and cross-referencing are all potential parts of listening station information packs. In every case, at-hand access closes the sale by putting the product into the consumer's hand. And whether the listening station features samples of many artists or is dedicated to single products, the quality and flexibility of digital technology makes listening stations a high-tech winner. In-store video play is a valuable sales tool. The EnviroCell study found that the full potential of video can be maximized by mixing entertainment and practical information. Retailers who intersperse video clips and movie trailers with their own sales materials get the most out of video. But there's more to it than just putting on a clip show. Monitor configuration and placement play a big part in maximizing video's sales effectiveness. Note how these monitors have clear sight lines for the consumer. A stack of monitors can be viewed at various distances. Monitor displays in the front of the store can actually project beyond the lease line in some locations to attract passers-by. Monitors placed at the rear of the store will draw consumers deeper into the store. Once inside the store, one or more additional sets of monitors carries on the video sales theme. Size counts here too. The bigger the screen, the bigger the impact. Multiple screens in a video wall configuration can take pictures to beyond life size. Add computer control and a video wall can be a dazzling display tool. Stores are also maximizing the sales impact of their video in-store play system by merchandising the products featured in the videos at or near the video monitors where feasible. One chain that illustrates many of the EnviroCell recommendations in one powerhouse location is the Sam Goody store at Universal City Walk in Hollywood. 
The exterior starts with great showbiz signage. This is a heavy foot traffic area, and the water fountain in front of the store is a popular attraction before the consumer even enters the store. Backlit displays greet shoppers, and one is immediately hit with the diversity and excitement of the products. Directional signage and spotlighting highlight all of the product departments. Video monitors and display boards ring the product shelves. Special sections have been set up for children's, videos, magazines and books, CD-ROM and multimedia, and a separate section for video sales with a sister company, Suncoast Motion Picture Company. A separate international section includes foreign language titles, a big favorite with the many tourists who visit Universal City. And capping off this store as an entertainment destination is the Espresso Bar on the second floor, with comfortable seating, a relaxed atmosphere, and listening stations for consumers to sample products as well as be entertained. That's putting equal emphasis on the show and the business. It sure is, and while not all stores have that kind of space and facilities, there are ideas galore on how to make the most of the EnviroCell study for every retailer. Thanks, Stephanie. In-store merchandising is one of the retailer's most powerful tools. Remember, advertising at the point of sale can make a big impact on your bottom line. We hope you've come away from this program with a wealth of new ideas to make your store more profitable and more entertaining. Thanks for watching.